In our last video on the history of the Sith, we told the story of the Seventh Battle of Rusan, which saw the new Sith and the Brotherhood of Darkness wiped out in a climactic final battle with the Jedi. When we left off, the year was 1000 BBY. The Jedi believed themselves totally victorious, and the Republic was starting to rebuild from its century-long Dark Age. The Sith were thought to be extinct, but this was not the case. A single Sith Lord had survived Rusan, Darth Bane, and in secret, he reformed the Sith Order, introducing a new philosophy and a new plan for ultimate victory. Today, in the final chapter of our history of the Sith, we'll be revealing the secrets of Bane's Order of the Sith Lords, discussing the last few centuries of the Sith before the start of the films. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Two there should be. No more, no less. One to embody the power, the other to crave it. So decreed Darth Bane, then the sole surviving Lord of the Sith in 1000 BBY. This doctrine, the rule of two, became the guiding principle of the Sith for the next thousand years, and it was instituted to solve what Bane saw as the fatal flaw of the new Sith. For a thousand years, the new Sith had the Republic and the Jedi on the back foot, but they were constantly squandering their strength with pointless infighting. Battles over the title of Dark Lord of the Sith were common, and groups of weaker apprentices would regularly band together to kill stronger masters, as happened to Darth Ruin, weakening the Sith as a whole. Bane's predecessor, Lord Khan, tried to resolve this issue with his Brotherhood of Darkness, which restricted competition and made the Sith into a dark mirror of the Jedi Order which Bane saw as an affront to Sith ideology. Thus, he manipulated Khan into destroying himself and the other Sith of the Brotherhood on Rusan so that he could rebuild the Sith from the ground up. The new Sith's problems stemmed from a contradiction within Sith ideology, one which we've seen play out countless times over 6,000 years of Sith history. The ideology of the Sith preached extreme individualism and constant competition, championing selfishness and personal power to the exclusion of all else. The Sith believed that only the strongest deserved to rule, and that the strongest could only prove their strength through competition. This encouraged Sith to constantly betray each other, and it made any Sith Empire self-sabotaging, as empire building required a sort of martial unity that was anathema to Sith ideology. The structure of most Sith Orders made this problem worse by giving multiple weaker Sith an opportunity to band together to take down stronger masters. This contradiction made the ideology of the Sith inherently self-destructive, and all prior Sith Orders had to make a choice between destroying themselves or watering down Sith ideology. Bane's Rule of Two was the only solution to this contradiction. Bane did away with the armies and empires, the legions of apprentices and councils of lords. He limited the Sith to a single Dark Lord of the Sith, a master, and a single Shadowhand, their apprentice. In doing so, Bane believed competition, which was the way of the Sith, could be encouraged without squandering strength. Without other apprentices to ally with, after all, the lesser of the two Sith Lords would need to become stronger to become the master. Thus, with every generation, the strength of the Sith would increase, and to Bane, that was all that mattered. Bane's rule of two came in tandem with a new plan for victory. Rather than trying to conquer the galaxy by force, Bane's Sith Grand Plan called for the Sith to strike from the shadows, manipulating the galaxy into coming under Sith control. Treachery, after all, was the way of the Sith, and historically, the Sith had always performed best when working from the shadows, as the Sith Triumvirate did in the Dark Wars. Bane hoped his plan would lead to the extermination of the Jedi and the total triumph of the Sith, but he didn't believe this would happen in his lifetime. Rather, his plan would take centuries to come to fruition, guided all the while by his order of the Sith Lords. Before leaving Rusan, Bane took a young Force-sensitive girl to be his apprentice, Darth Xana. The two settled on desolate Umbria, and for 10 years, Bane raised the young girl as a Sith Lord, teaching her everything he knew and testing her against the Hissus dragons of the planet's Lake Nut. Xana became a powerful Sith Lord, particularly skilled in the obscure art of Sith sorcery and Bane constantly reminded her that, per the rule of two, she would kill him and take an apprentice of her own, 
when she was strong enough to do so. Ten years after Rusan, Bane and Xana were discovered and nearly destroyed by the Jedi during a misadventure on Tython. Thanks to Xana's Sith sorcery though, the two were able to escape and the Jedi were tricked into believing they had killed Darth Bane. Instead, Xana had driven a childhood friend of hers mad and set him up as Darth Bane, and the Jedi, who didn't know what Bane looked like, fell for the ruse and killed him. As part of this encounter, the Jedi learned of the Rule of Two and Bane's reformed Order of Sith Lords, but they believed they had nipped the threat of these new Sith in the bud. They were, of course, wrong. After this incident, Bane and Xana spent the next 10 years covertly manipulating the galaxy. A lot of this work involved ensuring that the Republic was able to rebuild and remain intact. As Bane reasoned, the collapse of the Republic would mean that the Sith would have to topple multiple splinter states, which was harder than seizing control of one galaxy-spanning Republic. The two crafted civilian identities for themselves, posing as Sep and Alia Omek, and moved to Seer Trick 4, where they bought a mansion and began amassing a vast personal fortune based on that of the late Lord Cordis whose IGBC account Bane was able to seize control of. During this time, Bane's health began to deteriorate due to his immersion in the dark side, but for a while, Xana showed no sign of betraying him. This infuriated Bane, who feared she would wait until he was weak to strike, thus defeating the purpose of the Rule of Two. Thus, Bane sought out and found the holocron of Darth and Dedu, which taught him the power of essence transfer a dark side ability that would allow Bane to take over the body of another. He planned to take over Xana's body and find a new apprentice, and to replace Xana, he selected an Iktochi Huntress he named Darth Cognus. But Xana was unwilling to be replaced, and on Ambria, Darth Xana fought one last battle with Darth Bane. Xana won, and though Bane attempted to survive via essence transfer, Xana thwarted his attempt and destroyed his spirit. She took Darth Cognus as her apprentice, allowing the Order of the Sith Lords to continue. Xana and Cognus continued Bane's grand plan, with Xana inheriting the fortune she and her master had amassed and passing it on to Cognus. Darth Cognus eventually slew Darth Xana and took an apprentice of her own, Darth Millennial, a three-eyed human mutant. But Millennial disagreed with many aspects of Bane's ideology, especially the Rule of Two, bringing him into conflict with his master, who was totally committed to Bane's doctrine. Eventually, she branded Millennial a heretic and kicked him out of the Order. Millennial went on to found another Dark Side cult, the Prophets of the Dark Side, while Cognus took on another apprentice. For centuries, the line of Bane continued. Roughly 30 Dark Lords of the Sith came after Darth Bane, most of whom very little is known about. One such Sith Lord was Darth Vectivus. The noteworthy Dark Lord after Cognus was Darth Gravid, who ruled circa 533 BBY. Gravid was unique among the Bainite Sith Lords in that he actually turned back to the light, destroying much of the Sith lore that he had amassed in his fortress on Jaguada. He was stopped by his apprentice, Darth Gien, who claimed the title of Dark Lord and slew her master, despite suffering extreme injuries in the process. But Darth Gravid still did considerable damage and many Sith techniques were lost forever, including Essence Transfer. Nonetheless, the Order of the Sith survived thanks to Darth Gien. She was eventually followed by Darth Ramage, and then by an unnamed Dark Lord who, together with his apprentice, Darth Tenebris, created a wound in the Force around 167 BBY, allowing the Jedi to sense the growing power of the Dark Side for the first time in centuries. Tenebris, a Bith who was a starship designer named Rujes Gnome in his day-to-day -day life, eventually killed his master and became the new Dark Lord. Instead of seeking out an apprentice the normal way, Tenebris, who was a scientist at heart, paid off a Mun couple to produce a child he calculated would be strong in the Force. When the child's strength in the Force became apparent, Tenebris took custody of the boy, whom he named Darth Plagueis. In Tenebris and Plagueis' time, the Sith Grand Plan was steadily approaching fruition. The Order of the Sith Lords had amassed a vast network of spies, contacts and puppets, as well as an enormous fortune and a treasure trove of artifacts and lore. The Republic was becoming increasingly corrupt, the Jedi were becoming increasingly blind, and Sith influenced corporations were becoming incredibly powerful. When Plagueis betrayed Tenebrous in 67 BBY and took the mantle of Dark Lord for himself, 
he believed the final victory of the Sith was near at hand. For his apprentice, Plagueis chose a young Naboo aristocrat named Palpatine, whom he named Darth Sidious. Sidious, as Palpatine, went into galactic politics, eventually becoming senator for the Trummel sector, while Plagueis operated as banking clan executive Hego the Mask. The two plotted to seize control of the Republic and wipe out the Jedi by installing Sidious as Supreme Chancellor. And they spent decades laying the groundwork for this plan, with Sidious stoking corruption in the Senate and Plagueis manipulating the galaxy's mega corporations into arming and preparing for civil war. But over the years, Plagueis steadily became distracted from the grand plan. He, like many Sith before him, was obsessed with the idea of achieving eternal life, and he had found a novel way to do so. Plagueis was a staunch materialist, and he saw the Force through a scientific light, not a religious one, as a poorly understood form of energy instead of an all-powerful entity. The key to this, he believed, was the midichlorians, which he became obsessed with manipulating and controlling. He made considerable progress on this technique, achieving the ability to micromanage midichlorians for the purposes of killing or healing. Plagueis' research became an obsession that he eventually spent all of his time on, while Sidious did the work of preparing for the fulfillment of the Grand Plan. To help him in this, Sidious trained a Dathomirian Zabrak, whom he named Darth Maul, to act as his Sith assassin. Plagueis was aware of and approved of this. Since Maul was merely a Sith assassin, not a Sith Lord, he didn't see it as a violation of the Rule of Two. Not that Plagueis cared much for the Rule of Two, in fact, he believed that he and Sidious would render it obsolete, as he believed his work would allow them to live forever. After Sidious' training was complete, the two began acting more as equal partners than master and apprentice, and Plagueis believed that the Rule of Two had been superseded. In 32 BBY, after decades of planning, the start of the final stage of the Sith Grand Plan began. Sidious and Plagueis manipulated the Trade Federation into invading Naboo, and while Sidious sent Darth Maul to help with the invasion, he and Plagueis manipulated the Senate into making him Supreme Chancellor. Riding on a wave of sympathy over the invasion of his homeworld, Darth Sidious assumed control of the Republic. With his victory secure, he turned on Plagueis. As the two celebrated their victory on the night of Sidious' election, Plagueis fell asleep after drinking too much wine, and Sidious killed him with a blast of Force Lightning, proclaiming himself the Dark Lord of the Sith. You know how the story goes from here. With the help of his apprentices, first Darth Tyrannus and then Darth Vader, Darth Sidious used the Clone Wars to destroy the Jedi Order and transform the Republic into the Galactic Empire. The Sith Grand Plan was a success. Once more, the Sith ruled the galaxy and the vision of Darth Bane was fulfilled. But the Sith's ultimate victory didn't last. A mere 20 years after the rise of the Empire, Darth Sidious was slain by Darth Vader who returned to the light through the guidance of his son, Luke. With his death and Vader's redemption, the line of Darth Bane was ended, and though future generations of Darksiders would claim to be Sith, the Dark Side had taken a blow that it would never recover from. We hope you've enjoyed our history of the Sith, from King Aras and Ajuntapal all the way to Darth Sidious. But what do you think? Would you like to see separate videos on any of these Sith Lords? What did you think of the series? Are there any other series you'd like us to produce? Let us know in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.